several places and times, I considered it a possible great idea. But rather than mechanically listing the top 10 all-time most widespread psychological ideas of humankind, I decided that coherence was more important than frequency. I wanted to write about a set of ideas that would fit together, build upon each other, and tell a story about how human beings can find happiness and meaning in life. Helping people find happiness and meaning is precisely the goal of the new field of positive psychology, a field in which I have been active. So this book is in a way about the origins of positive psychology in ancient wisdom and the applications of positive psychology today. Most of the research I will cover was done by scientists who would not consider themselves positive psychologists. Nonetheless, I have drawn on 10 ancient ideas and a great variety of modern research findings to tell the best story I can about the causes of human flourishing and the obstacles to well-being that we place in our own paths. The story begins with an account of how the human mind works. Not a full account, of course, just two ancient truths that must be understood before you can take advantage of modern psychology to improve your life. The first truth is the foundational idea of this book. The mind is divided into parts that sometimes conflict. Like a rider on the back of an elephant, the conscious, reasoning part of the mind has only limited control of what the elephant does. Nowadays, we know the causes of these divisions and a few ways to help the rider and the elephant work better as a team. The second idea is Shakespeare's about how thinking makes it so. Or, as Buddha said, our life is the creation of our mind. But we can improve this ancient idea today by explaining why most people's minds have a bias towards seeing threats and engaging in useless worry. We can also do something to change this bias by using three techniques that increase happiness, one ancient and two very new. The second step in the story is to give an account of our social lives. Again, not a complete account, just two truths, widely known but not sufficiently appreciated. One is the golden rule. Reciprocity is the most important tool for getting along with people, and I'll show you how you can use it to solve problems in your own life and avoid being exploited by those who use reciprocity against you. However, reciprocity is more than just a tool. It is also a clue about who we humans are and what we need, a clue that will be important for understanding the end of the larger story. The second truth in this part of the story is that we are all, by nature, hypocrites. And this is why it is so hard for us to follow the golden rule faithfully. Recent psychological research has uncovered the mental mechanisms that make us so good at seeing the slightest speck in our neighbor's eye and so bad at seeing the log in our own. If you know what your mind is up to and why you so easily see the world through a distorting lens of good and evil, you can take steps to reduce your self-righteousness. You can thereby reduce the frequency of conflicts with others who are equally convinced of their righteousness. At this point in the story, we'll be ready to ask, where does happiness come from? There are several different happiness hypotheses. One is that happiness comes from getting what you want. But we all know, and research confirms, that such happiness is short-lived. A more promising hypothesis is that happiness comes from within and cannot be obtained by making the world conform to your desires. This idea was widespread in the ancient world. Buddha in India and the Stoic philosophers in ancient Greece and Rome all counseled people to break their emotional attachments to people and events, which are always unpredictable and uncontrollable, and to cultivate instead an attitude of acceptance. This ancient idea deserves respect. And it is certainly true that changing your mind is usually a more effective response to frustration than is changing the world. However, I will present evidence that this second version of the happiness hypothesis is wrong. Recent research shows that there are some things worth striving for. There are external conditions of life that can make you lastingly happier. One of these conditions is relatedness, the bonds we form and need to form with others. I'll present research showing where love comes from, why passionate love always cools, and what kind of love is true love. I'll suggest that the happiness hypothesis offered by Buddha and the Stoics should be amended. Happiness comes from within, and happiness comes from without. We need the guidance of both ancient wisdom and modern science to get the balance right. The next